Hi, I'm Garfer. This video is on humulin M3. So what is it used for? It's used for diabetes. And how does it work? A humulin M3 cartridges, humulin M3 vials, and humulin M3 quick pen, pre-filled pens, all contain biphasic isophane insulin. They're used to treat diabetes. People with diabetes have a deficiency or absence of a hormone manufactured by the pancreas called insulin. Insulin is the main hormone responsible for the control of blood sugar in the blood. People with type 1 diabetes need to have injections of insulin to control the amount of glucose in their bloodstream. Insulin injections act as a replacement for natural insulin and allow people with diabetes to achieve normal blood glucose levels. The insulin works in the same way as natural insulin by binding to insulin receptors on cells in the body. Insulin causes cells in the liver, muscle and fat tissue to increase their uptake of glucose from the bloodstream. It also decreases the production of glucose by the liver and has various other effects that lower the amount of gl blood glucose in the blood. So humulin M3 contains a mix of two types of insulin, soluble insulin and isophane insulin. Together, this combination of insulin is called biphasic isophane insulin. Humulin M3 contains 30% soluble insulin and 70% isophane insulin. Soluble insulin is known as a short-acting insulin. It starts to work quickly, within 30 to 60 minutes, and its effects last for about eight hours. Isophane is, insulin is known as an intermediate-acting insulin. It takes longer to act, but its effects last longer. The premix combination provides a rapid initial blood glucose lowering effect, followed by a prolonged effect that controls blood glucose throughout the day. It is usually injected onto the skin approximately 30 minutes before a meal. It is important to monitor your blood glucose regularly and adjust your insulin dose as required. Your doctor or diabetic team will explain this to you. Keeping your blood glucose level as close to normal as possible and not too high or too low significantly reduces the risk of developing late stage diabetic complications. So how do I use it? Humulin M3 injections are usually given under the skin of the upper arms, thighs, buttocks or abdomen. You should take care to make sure that the injection does not enter a blood vessel. The injection may start to work at different speeds depending on the site you use and various other factors, such as if you've been doing exercise. In general, injections into the abdomen start to work quicker than those given in other areas. You shouldn't massage the injection area after administering the injection. Each time you inject your insulin, make sure you use a different site. This helps to prevent the skin thickening and pitting, which can occur if the injection is repeatedly given into the same site. You should measure your blood sugar levels every day when using insulin injections. The dose you need to inject each time will depend on your blood sugar levels, what you are going to eat, and if you have been doing or will be doing exercise. Control of blood sugar is an individual process and your diabetes specialist will help you to understand what is required. Your insulin requirements may increase when you are ill, especially if you have an infection or fever. Your insulin dose may also need adjusting during periods of emotional disturbance, or if you increase your physical activity or change your usual diet. Insulin requirements may be reduced if you have impaired kidney or liver function. Discuss this with your doctor or diabetes nurse to make sure you are optimize control of your blood sugar. So it's not to be used in people with low blood sugar levels or hypoglycemia. This medicine should not be used if you are allergic to any of its ingredients. So please inform your doctor or pharmacist if you have previously experienced such an allergy. If you feel you have experienced an allergic reaction, stop using this medicine and inform your doctor or pharmacist immediately. So for pregnancy and breastfeeding, insulin does not cross the placenta and provides no risk to the developing baby. Blood sugar levels need to be maintained as stable as possible during pregnancy and you should consult your diabetic specialist to discuss how to achieve this. Your insulin requirements are likely to decrease in the first trimester and subsequently increase in the second and third trimesters. Discuss this again with your doctor. There is no risk to nursing infants and from insulin taken by the mother. However, your insulin dose may need to be decreased during breastfeeding 
again discuss this with your doctor. So the side effects of in this injection, low blood glucose level or hypoglycemia, redness and swelling or itching at the injection site, skin thickening or pitting, if injection is given too frequently into the same site and rarer side effects would be the allergic reaction which is a hypersensitivity such as skin rash, itchy hives, chest tightness, shortness of breath or severe allergic reactions such as anaphylaxis. The side effects listed above may not include all the side effects reported by the medicines manufacturer. For more information about any other possible risks associated with this medicine please read the information provided with the medicine or consult your doctor or pharmacist for more. So how can this medicine affect other medicines? Insulin itself doesn't affect other medicines. However, it is important to be aware that many medicines can affect blood glucose levels and can therefore change your insulin requirements. For this reason, people with diabetes should always seek advice from the doctor or pharmacist before taking any new medicines or stopping the existing medicines. So the following medicines may decrease blood sugar levels. If you start treatment with any of these, your insulin dose may therefore need de decreasing. So ACE inhibitors, so of, for example, captopril, anabolic steroids, for example, testosterone, anti-diabetic medicines taken by mouth, disopyramide, defibrate, such as gemfibrazole, fluoxetine, monoamine oxidase inhibitor antidepressants, octarotide, large doses of salicylates, for example aspirin, small pain relieving doses do not affect, have no effect on the, the injection. So beta blockers, for example propranolol, including eye drops containing beta blockers, can mask some of the signs of low blood sugar, such as increased heart rate and tremor. They also prolong episodes of low blood sugar and impair recovery back to normal glucose levels. So the following medicines may increase blood sugar levels. If you start treatment with any of these, your insulin dose may therefore need some increasing. Some antipsychotic medicines, for example, chlorpromazine and olanazepine, the corticosteroids such as prednisolone, Danazone, the diuretics, especially thiazide, diuretics, the isoniazid, lithium, protease inhibitors, such as metanofer, somatriptan, which is a human growth hormone, estrogens and progestogens, such as those contained in oral contraceptives, may affect blood sugar levels, and women taking these may need small adjustments up or down in their insulin dose. So how do I store human and M3? Prefilled pens, unused prefilled pens, should be stored in a refrigerator at between 2 and 8 degrees Celsius. You do not freeze them. Keep the pen in the outer carton to protect from light. Once in use, the pens should be kept out of the fridge below 30 degrees. They can be used for up to 28 days. The pen cap must be put back on the pen after each injection in order to protect from light. The pens should not be stored with the needle attached and should not be kept in the fridge once in use. So the cartridges, before use, cartridges should be stored in a refrigerator at between 2 and 8 degrees Celsius. Do not freeze. Keep the cartridges in the outer carton to protect from light. And once in use, the pen with the inserted cartridge should be kept out of the fridge below 30 degrees Celsius. It can be used for up to 28 days. The pen cap must be put back on the pen after each injection in order to protect from light. The pen should not be stored with the needle attached and the vials, before use vials should be stored in a refrigerator at between 2 and 8 degrees, you do not freeze, keep the vial in the outer carton in order to protect it from light, and once in use, the vial should be kept out of the fridge below 30 degrees Celsius, it can be used for up to 28 days. Again, keep it in the outer carton to protect it from light, make sure all medicines are kept out of reach of children, and avoid exposing them to excessive heat or direct sunlight. So if you have any, any more questions, you can contact me through the Life Pharmacist on the website, email me, or call into the pharmacy, Lynch's Pharmacy in Broaddale, up Mary Brahill and Douglas and Cork. Thank you for watching.